It was almost midnight when Joe left his house and drove out in the middle of the blizzard. The winds were howling and the temperature was freezing in the small town of Ennis, Montana. But Joe sped through the twisted mountain route towards the far end of town. A long drive down the slippery roads and the dense snow. He screeched to a stop in front of the old house of worship. Not many people came to this house of worship, nor did many people maintain it. It was but priest Andrew who looked after it and also lived here himself. Within a while of knocking, Priest Andrew opened the door, quite surprised to see Joe. Joe, what a surprise. What brings you here in this condition? Catching his breath, Joe stared at Priest Andrew. Priest Andrew, I'm ready. I've made up my mind. I'm ready to confess. Shocked by Joe's condition, Priest Andrew ushered him in. Quickly come inside, you're freezing. Priest Andrew escorted Joe inside and started up the fireplace as he sat down on the sofa. Try to warm yourself up. Let me bring you some coffee. Joe rubbed his hands by the fire, finally able to breathe again. He could still hear the winds howling outside as the windows shook. Waiting for Priest Andrew, Joe walked around the room, stopping by a dagger hung up on the wall. Staring at it for a while, Joe took it down and held it in his hand. Just when Priest Andrew returned. Joe? Joe turned around, holding the dagger. Joe put the dagger down. Priest, are you scared I might try to take my life? Believe me, Priest, sometimes I truly consider it. Sometimes I really think of taking a knife and ending everything. Joe grew up in this small town of Ennis, where he went to school and college. Down the line, he inherited his father's small business, with which he did well for himself. He got married, and he and his wife lived in their own small house. Joe was living a wholesome, happy, simple life but everything changed the day his daughter was born. The moment Joe took her in his arms, he couldn't look away from her deep blue eyes. Neither did he nor his wife have the blue eyes their daughter had. She, she looks just like her. Who? Nobody. Like your grandmother? I heard she had blue eyes. Yes, I heard too, but I never met her. Joe would stare at his daughter all the time. His wife hadn't thought much of it at first. But then, she often found Joe awake in the middle of the night. Staring into their daughter's crib. Joe, what are you looking at? It's nothing. What is the matter with you? Ever since our daughter has been born, you've been behaving like this. No, it's nothing. And soon, this became an obsession for Joe. He would just sit and stare at his daughter 
pondering for hours and hours. He wouldn't be playing with her or talking to her or even holding her. It seemed as if he was almost scared of her. Ever since their daughter's birth, Joe has had sleepless nights. And soon, it came to the point where he felt like he was losing his mind. He couldn't focus on anything. He couldn't do anything. But stare at his daughter's blue eyes. It was during these difficult times that Joe found out about Priest Andrew and his house of worship. He then began visiting the house of worship for help. And when Priest Andrew heard about his condition, he encouraged him to confess his sins so he could redeem himself. But at the time, Joe wasn't prepared to confess. But his conscience wouldn't let him rest. He couldn't take it anymore. And tonight, Joe had woken up, determined to end his life. He took his gun and held it to his head, about to pull the trigger. But then, he stared at his wife, at his daughter, and couldn't do it. It was at that point, he had made up his mind that he would confess even if he loses his life after that. Priest Andrew anxiously stared at Joe as he tried to approach him. Joe, calm down and give me the dagger. Slowly reaching him, he caught hold of it and took it from him. He then escorted Joe to take a seat and hung the dagger up on the wall again. Try to relax, have your coffee. Joe sighed as he picked up the mug and took a sip. Are you feeling better? I'm sorry, priest. I don't know what got into me. After a moment of silence, Joe let out a deep breath and looked at Priest Andrew. It was almost 18 years ago, when I was in school. The kids were not very nice to me. I hated going to school. But I still went every day because of her. She was always nice to me. She always had a smile. She could brighten my day. She was my angel. I was in love with her, but I never had the courage to express my feelings to her. The years passed by like this, and they were good years. And my love for her grew. But it was in our junior year, I noticed, she started hanging out with another guy. And I didn't like it at all. And all of a sudden, a distance came between us, and she started hanging out with him all the time. But in all this, one day, I got a chance to be with her. We were assigned a science project together to research on pH levels, and I came up with an idea. I have an idea. We can go to the riverside and collect some samples of river water from upstream and compare it to the river water downstream and test how much the pH levels shift. That's an amazing idea, Joe. Let's do it. When do you want to go? This Friday afternoon? That Friday, we rode our bikes into the woods until we reached the hillside right over the river. We were all alone, and I finally opened up to her. Are you and Richard together? Well, 
He's a close friend of mine. Don't talk with him. Stay away from him. What? What do you mean? I can talk to whoever I want. No. I don't want you to talk to him. What is the matter with you, Joe? Why are you behaving so strange? Because I love you. You're mine. What are you saying, Joe? If you really like me, then try to win me. You can't force me to love you. No. Why don't you understand how I feel for you? He doesn't really love you. I love you. Is this why you brought me here? All this was a trap? Listen to me. No, I think I'm going to go. She got mad and got on her bicycle to leave. And I started following her. No, stop, I'm not done. Leave me alone, Joe. That day as I tried to stop her, she lost balance on her bicycle. And it crashed. She hit her head on one of the rocks and died in the accident. As Joe became teary, he clutched his fist. And now, when I look at my daughter, she reminds me of her. She looks just like her. Believe me, Joe, when I say I understand how painful an accidental death of a loved one can be. I know what you're going through. You think it's your fault, but it wasn't your fault. You were young, you were in love, and you didn't intend for it to happen. It was an accident. You need to forgive yourself. Joe silently sat there before he finally said it. Priest Andrew, it was Maggie. My daughter has those same blue eyes, just like Maggie. What? Fifteen years ago, Andrew was living a very different life. He was working a job and raising his only daughter, Margaret. Even though his wife had been diagnosed with cancer, they held strong together and were a happy family. Margaret was the life of the house. Her presence made those difficult times easy. Her smile made all the pain go away, and the parents couldn't imagine how life would be without their beloved daughter. But then, with one accident, everything changed forever. Margaret was found drowned in the river. During the police investigation, they came to the conclusion that she had gone to the riverside to collect water for a school project and fell into the water. And since she didn't know how to swim, she must have drowned and hit her head against the rocks. After their daughter's death, Andrew's wife's health deteriorated significantly. Margaret's loss had shattered her, and she no longer had the will to fight through the pain. And with her depression, her sickness increased. And she too passed away. Andrew was devastated. He couldn't bear the loss of his family. He struggled with depression and pain for years. He gave up on his job, he gave up speaking with people, and started living in solitude, all by himself, pondering on what happened to Margaret, remembering the beautiful family he once used to have. Andrew changed completely. He felt no happiness nor hope of better times in his life. And things came to the point where he felt like he would be better off ending his life. 
but that was when he joined this ministry and found help for himself and began helping others who suffered from depression like him. Priest Andrew looked at Joe in shock. That can't be. Maggie was found far downstream by the end of town. She drowned. I saw you at her funeral that day. That's why I found you. Priest Andrew, Maggie didn't drown. That day, when I realized she was no more, I was afraid. I didn't know what to do. I knew when her body would be found, it would lead to me, because she went there with me. So, I threw her body in the river. But that night, there was a heavy storm over Annis. The rain caused the river flow to increase. That's why her body was found in a distant location. Hearing Joe, Priest Andrew couldn't control himself. He couldn't control the rage. His pain that he had suppressed all these years having lost his daughter. He got up and grabbed Joe by the collar and threw him down onto the desk before he picked up the dagger. You took my Margaret from me. Do it. Do it. I don't deserve to live. I'm a sinner. Joe opened his eyes to see the dagger stabbed into the table next to him. He got up staring at Priest Andrew. Priest Andrew? What you did was evil, but I don't want your daughter to grow up without a father. Priest Andrew turned around, his eyes red in tears as he held back his anguish and sorrow. I forgive you. Leave. In silence, Joe turned and left. He returned home to his family. As he stepped into his room, he walked up to the crib and looked at his sleeping daughter. Hearing the faint noise, his wife woke up, startled to see Joe. Joe, where did you go in the storm? It's 3 a.m. Nowhere. Is everything okay? Everything will be fine. Placing his hands on his daughter, she suddenly woke up and looked at him with her deep blue eyes. You're truly beautiful, Margaret. Click on the subscribe button and check out more awesome videos on our channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon because you know it's interesting.